Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, welcome back to the dojo. As always, I'm Ryu. He's Age. We're back for anime night number two in the dojo for the week. This time featuring My Hero Academia season five, episode two, which is in fact uh, probably where the story will start in earnest because last week we got a big ass recap basically and just, you know, reintroduction to the characters. That's just something this show seems to like to do is, uh, yep bring up the past <laughs> just in case you forgot everybody here's uh here's present mike he's got you man he's, he's got you <laughs> and uh there were some things that did happen that were important like you know the students are now like on call because they have their provisional licenses and alarm can go off to protect the school or you know if there's a like a if their assistance is requested basically and then we also had this over here on camera right Mirio, just doing his thing. <laughs> Even without his powers, he's he's still Mirio, which <laughs> is some serious comic relief. Which I look forward to more of his shenanigans. So we'll we'll, we'll see how many uh, Mirio shenanigans will be this season. Yeah, hopefully he still maintains being a fairly main character despite not having his powers anymore. Right. So. Also, the going into the major plot point really quick is the whole uh, thing that we mentioned before with Endeavor and Dobby. We're pretty damn sure, based on Age's original uh, theory, that Dobby is the lost. Uh, um, what's what's their last name? Todoroki. Todoroki. Yeah. So he's uh he's about to have a conversation with Hawks and uh, or not about to. I believe Hawks is going into Endeavor's uh, hospital room and he's going to tell him the fallout. So we mentioned at the end of the last episode that, you know, probably get the fallout to that discussion, what Dobby wanted, you know, what they talked about, that kind of thing. And whether Endeavor is coming to the realization that, oh, yeah, I had a third son. <laughs> well, <laughs> I forgot whatever, about that, dude. <laughs> whatever happened to that little shit? I know. It's like, wait, did, <laughs> wait, we, we had a third son? Really? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, he was full red hair like you. You don't remember this? No, he, he ran away. He he just disappeared one day. Didn't come back. It's, it's not fairly coming back certain, to me. Fairly certain the only son I have is named Shoto. Yeah, you're telling me I have four kids? What? <laughs> Man. But yeah, as, as we, uh, random side note, as we see in the movie... Uh, that we mentioned that we're going to try to like see as the author did say the movie uh the most recent movie that came out uh is canon it'll be interesting to see when that like actually shoehorns into the story because at that point endeavor is like fully recovered so we're we're going to try to figure out basically when when the movie occurs while season 5 is progressing here yeah or if it's just kind of like some weird timey-wimey nonsense, but still technically canon, which the whole point I was getting at was the whole, like, doting father, like, overly, like, kind of like Subaru's dead in a way from ReZero, just full-on, just, like, squeezing the life out of Shoto when he realized he was okay. Uh, doting father endeavor was pretty damn funny. But, yeah, so, going in, I'm just... What, what what were our thoughts on this? It was gonna be like a like a typical like school arc, and then uh, like a a villain arc with possibly Gigantomachia and like a little bit of a uh, probably Dobby story. Yeah, based on the intro, uh, I think it's most likely it's going to be uh, more of a school focused arc. Yeah. So, uh, without with that being said, uh, let's let's see what's going on. Back to the hospital. The top two heroes were flooded and beaten already! Saw the news and hopped over! Patchwork, you're part of the league, huh? I'll kick your butt! Man, and things were just getting good. Do it, Uchiko. <laughs> See you later, number one. I'm sure we'll have time to have a heart-to-heart -heart someday. I look forward to it. Until then, try not to disappoint. 
And don't you dare get killed, Benji Todoroki! Tell us where your friends are! So we have a third war hero at play now. Apparently. Vanished. It's the same way they bounced out of Camino that day. Whatever the case, we managed to stop that juiced up Nomu. Idiot. This is just the beginning. We need you to infiltrate the League of Villains. Uh, you're gonna have to explain, because that sounds crazy. Yeah. Aren't you forming I was gonna say team? double agent. Mm. Like what I was gonna Reno say is he's, Where did you it's hear about far that? more likely that he's actually need your assistance. It's vital, betraying you them, just proven not how sharp your eyes he betrayed the heroes. At the Camino battle, right. we had to consider the safety of the kidnapping victims, so we rushed the operation and didn't gather enough intel. We misread their strength. To truly stamp out these dark organizations, we need more information, especially about that bioengineered human. Was that thing made using just all for one's power? If we don't learn everything we can about the League, then we'll just keep making the same mistakes. So you want me to get close to them, but expect me to sit back and ignore all the harm they cause? We're asking you because we think you're someone who can ignore it. You're indifferent to prestige and fame, and you have your eyes fixed on your long-term goal. We think there's no one more suitable than you. Aw, and you care about me so much, you'll be my bodyguard. That's so nice. I'll incinerate you. Once my feathers grow back, I can start patrolling again. It'll probably take another day or so. Can't wait. And what about you, huh? Taking some R&R, &R, big guy? Possibly. Okay, catch you later then. <laughs> Is this absolutely necessary? This is a proposition. By going after the League of Villains from both the inside and the outside, we can cut off their retreat and box them in. Really? <laughs> You're calling it a proposition, even though you know I can't possibly refuse you. Our family! You look like you're different, but you don't act that way. You neglected us. Even if you're the number one hero, that doesn't erase the past. Mom screams. Shoto's crying. What happened to our big brother, Toya? You may have had a change of there heart, it is. but you can't waltz in here and think we'll accept you. How disgusting can you be? That same night, after basic physical training, I worked on one for all until I was exhausted and passed out on top of my sheets. And she's dead. <laughs> this is where game ends for him. Beyond her were other people I didn't recognize. At now first. here's this. Wait, there... I'd had a vision like this before. But this dream was much clearer than that one. They were the vestiges of one for all. I can't talk, but I can move my right arm. What's up with my feet? There are two more I can't make out. One person improves the power, then hands it off to another person. It continues to grow as it's passed along. It is this cultivated power that allows me to save those who are in need of a hero. The truth behind my strength. These are the successors of One for All. Every inheritor, they get it in there somewhere. seven people, eight including me. Every person who's ever used the quirk except its original wielder. Stand at my side. Dear foolish little brother. Fucking the snacks had fat gums face on them. Right, yeah. Here's the preview! Oh, that's the preview. All right. <laughs> and here's our preview. Once again, we don't watch them. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess now we can talk again since there's no music. I'm not mad. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that was definitely a thing. Uh, I don't know if I got... I was able to get that in earlier, but uh, I was going to mention that, oh yeah, the whole... Deku being the ninth wielder of uh, All for One and uh, or One for All, sorry, just the, the interchangeable, just ah, uh, what well, was going to be another major point of this season, obviously. So we had Endeavor and his family. That's going to be a thing for quite some time, I believe. At least the first half of this season. I don't know if that's ever going to re be resolved. There might be some like minor progress. So that'll be a thing. The whole Dobby thing. Now we know what Hawks is doing. We talked about that last week with him. We're, what was it? I said it was like an 80-20. Like he was just, we thought it was 
Dobby just wanted to talk to him, but then when the scene came through, it's like, no, we got to see another warp hero. We got to see the rabbit girl, which so, apparently is a fan favorite, so people are probably excited about that. Yeah, so we don't actually know entirely if it's another warp quirk, because that was the more or less the same quirk that was used in Kamino. But the thing is, the reason why I said another was because it was heavily implied during that scene that it was all for one who was using that warp quirk. But they're referring to a different individual. So either it's someone else who has an incredibly similar power, or it was this new this new person the entire time, and it was just a red herring making us making with false implications that it was all for one doing it. Right. Because assuming all for one was the one actually doing it, it's not like he had time to give it to somebody else in the aftermath. Yeah, there was no opportunities, at least as far as we were shown, for him to have possibly ditched the power to someone else between when he used it to pull the to save the League of Villains and when he got apprehended by All Might. Right. So yeah, um, we got the whole... so either there's so either we have three warp warp quirks in play and just two of them are very similar, or it was never all for one to begin with. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to remember that whole scene uh, with the United States of Smash, and yeah, he he did use some uh, all for one did say something that seemed a little off, like he could only do use that power in a specific way so it, it could it could mean that he was telling someone to do it at a specific time so it was just making it look like he was doing it when he wasn't doing it yeah like or he was in constant contact with the individual somehow and you know so like the that warp quirk gets used once to grab Bakugo in the League of Villains wants to bring the Nomus from the factory to the League of Villains hideout wants to get the League of Villains away from All Might and then wants to uh, to throw Gran Torino in the way of All Might's attack right so it's a total of four times the most suspect one would be the Gran Torino thing, because how would All for One do that? How how would that have been done if it wasn't All for One? Right. Because that's the kind of thing that you, it seems like it would be require more coordination than a remote viewer could have possibly pulled off. Right. So there there would have to be some serious, you know, just. On another be... level of communication, you know what I mean, that we might not know about if we're going yeah. that route. So the most likely case is, like I initially said, is that there's three warp quirks. It's just the two are very similar. Right. He he might have, you know, this could be a family member of the person using it, like something something to that effect. Yeah, yeah since quirks are genetic. So while each person's quirk is still unique to them, they bear a lot of resemblance to their family members. Right. But yeah, I, I'd say this is a fairly reasonable start to the season. It's still, you know, we're still in laying the groundwork territory. We we really don't know what this arc is going to be about. Yeah, uh, this was more or less, more or less, this was the actual first episode. Right. Not not too much of a recap of, you know, hey, this is MHA, these are the heroes, these are the characters, this is their power. You know, President Mike gets to introduce everybody for the 97th time. <laughs> you know, the usual. But, you know, again, the, the first episode still did have some story implications, like, you know, the students being on call, basically. Um, you know, their training is being furthered by the big three. Mirio's still hilarious. Uh... You know, that that kind of stuff. There, there's still a couple important things in the uh, first episode that need to be taken away from it. But, uh, you know, 
Oh no, I have fallen off the bridge. Once again, they didn't secure the civilian. That that something could, could easily happen. This this like you have the civilian in a precarious position, they could get really scared and just fall off the bridge again. Well, you know, as I mentioned last time, that's a fairly reasonable response, the civilian getting scared and falling back into danger. But uh <laughs> still hilarious. But on the serious side, yes. But ho ho once again, hopefully we get to see more of Mario being Mario. And uh, yeah, this, once again, groundwork laying the whole Endeavor stuff with his family and Dobby. It was brought up. Uh, we got Dobby's actual name, which uh, we're going to have to go back and see what that exactly was. Because uh, we got Endeavor's first name, which I believe is I the first thing, first time we've ever heard it in the show. Yeah, I didn't quite catch Endeavor's first name. It went by really fast, and it's a short name, but I'm pretty sure the eldest of the Todoroki siblings, who at this point, like we said, is most likely Dobby, it was like Toya or something like that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll go back and check that before we uh, roll into the discussion here in a moment. So we want to get those correct. But first time we got to hear, obviously, Endeavor's first name and uh dobby's actual name because at this point if it's not him then where's m night Shyamalan? what a twist <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean it, it, there's yeah. just too many signs at this point especially now like age had his theory you know before and now like especially at the beginning at the end of last season and then the beginning of this one it's like there's just no way <laughs> yeah i've been sus on Dobby ever since he didn't give his initial identity and then I didn't come up with like that theory until like it was like late season three early maybe early season four I don't remember exactly when I came up with it but it was just a matter of I had rewatched the show a couple of times with different people and I just I kept noticing the red haired sibling and I was like that's got to be someone they keep showing it I like right. that they keep showing it. They only actually showed it like once at that point. Yeah, they had only shown it when Shoto was talking to Izuku after the sports or before they had their match in the sports festival. After well, whatever it was during the sports festival when he was talking to Deku, and they did that flashback, and you get to see the flashes of him, and then we see the second flashback, I believe, in the second to last or the very last episode of season four with the, yeah the the siblings that aren't Shoto. Uh, just lined up which I, had, that, I know that one hadn't been out yet but it was just the one scene that I'd seen several times at that point that was just like we never see him again mm -hmm. something has to be up with this one because they show him very distinctly in the flashbacks yep and once again it just makes sense because once again the Dobby has the eyes and Dobby has a fire quirk indeed and a very similar hairstyle, just now dyed black. Right. So yeah, uh, going in, more groundwork again. Um, reiterate, Endeavor stuff with Dobby. We got Hawks going undercover, uh, double agenting. That's kind of neat. Uh, I don't know, when was the last time I've seen a show that like this, uh, this genre that has kind of like a, an espionage element? It's, I don't know if I have, honestly. But uh, that that hopefully they do it well enough that it's like not just like a side thing. You know what I mean? Because Hawk seems to have an interesting character, and I'm sure there are plenty of people that want to know more about him. Besides just you know his overarching goal of he wants heroes to have all kinds of time on their hands. Uh, I guess the closest thing I could think of immediately off the top of my head would be the York New Arc and Hunter Hunter. Yeah, that's that's pretty good too. Yeah. Karapika did a fair amount of uh, infiltrating of the mob there. Right. And that was done pretty well, in my opinion. So we'll, we'll see how Hawks' uh, little uh, operation turns out. But if the League has potentially new people in it, it could just be more than just this new warp person, and there could be a quirk that could out him or something. So we'll, we'll definitely see what happens. It, it'll be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, I'll just leave it at that for the initial reaction. Good groundwork. We got to see uh, a lot of exposition on uh, All for One and his younger brother for the past users of uh, 
of Deku's power, so that's going to be a thing in this season. So there's two left that are shadowy figures. So I don't know if that's important or not. If if those two first, uh, the first two wielders after the original are important or not. But well, no, it's we don't actually know the order that they're in because they're not actually necessarily in chronological order. Because... I suppose, yeah. Because the one immediately to Deku's right is uh, Tomura. Uh, it was All Might's predecessor. And then All Might is way over there by the two shadowy figures rather than immediately next to Deku. Right. So we don't actually know if that's two and three. That could very well be like four and two. Right. Or something. But for whatever reason, those two are obfuscated. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, lost it there in a second. But uh, yeah, good good groundwork episode again. I liked it. I'll I'm definitely interested to see how the season goes. Um, I don't really have any gripes at the moment because it's the first two episodes. I mean, we 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 know what what this was going in. We were going to get a recap. That is what it is. You know what I mean? You can you can dislike it if you so choose, but it is what it is. That's just how this show rolls, especially with the the thing on my uh my left here. We got that one again. You know, so <laughs> Oh, I looked at my camera died. Oh, yep, your camera did die. So we're going to roll into the discussion with that. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and Frozen Age he will be unfrozen for the discussion. Uh, we're going to roll into discussion, so uh, have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you as you watch. We're going to roll into discussion. Like, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, if you enjoy our content, we appreciate any and all support you give us. So have a good one, and we'll see you over in the discussion.